record. Okay. We're going to record it for people who won't get to watch it on Facebook, for people who are not on Facebook. And we're here because it's World Food Day tomorrow. And uh, we're always ever ready to talk about food. <laughs> Especially, I think even if we didn't have our cookbook, I think you and I would always still talk about food. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the common denominator for most of conversations especially with me anyway yes and it is food is a great connector of people and you and i would talk a lot about food if we were sitting in the office all day we would i would keep giving you tips of how to encourage your vegetarianism using indian <laughs> cuisine <laughs> where's your copy where's your copy? i got it in here oh. yeah with the barcode new feature oh, yeah. yes yeah, yes. yeah. this is free barcode and now we're all yeah. grown up. Our cookbook is all grown up and it has a yeah. barcode. It's all grown up and it's actually in some bookstores around the country now. Oh, we've can got, you remember in, can we've you got remember the Cardaline Bookshop in Cardaline. And we've got Kenny's Bookshop, hopefully in Galway, might be stocking it for us. Hmm. And we have, what's the name? The Clonic Hilty Bookstore Cars. as well. Cars Bookstore in Clonic Hilty. Yeah. And, and Nano Nagel in Cork City Nagle, have copies of too. Copies at, and these are all Cork. And then in Galway, we also have it at Cafe Temple. And yes. we are hoping that the Urban Co-op in Limerick also has copies. Yes, yeah, I think they have copies still in yeah. Limerick. So yeah. if, you're a, if you own a shop front of any kind, please, and you want to store our amazing cookbook, which also has a barcode now, show us the barcode. Yeah, the easy scan. Yeah, so just get in touch with us and we can send some copies, even just a couple, if you wanted to see how they sell and if people are interested, even at reception um, or you know any kind of a, a front where customers are coming in and they can see it. Um, and they can always be directed to our website to just buy it online as well. Yeah. 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 You can buy one copy, you can buy a hundred copies and yeah. give it to everybody at work yeah. or in we the have, neighborhood. Exactly. We have an extract of it as well because we can always send like a PDF of it if you want to see what it looks like without getting it. But we, um, it's only really, you can only really understand and love it when you have it in your hand and you can just flip through all the pages. I think that, that's the Can thing. people tell where buy it? <laughs> but it, that's not but you see people have said that as well people have said how mm -hmm. lovely the book is you know um so yeah i, I think it's just so special about. because it's it's got stories in it like about real people and real people's um love of food and experiences with food and i think that's why it's special and anyone who's been away with server or anyone who's been in a, you know, a country abroad and they try different cuisine. I think it, this brings it back to them. And mm -hmm. especially, mm -hmm. I mean, there's somewhat a bit of travel happening at the minute, but there's, there's still not a lot of travel. And I think this food helps you kind of travel and bring back those memories. I definitely like memory when I smell something or see something, or some type of a food, I'm just like, it brings me back, especially the Philippines. So, yeah, so yeah. talk about your first time in Philippines with Serve and what did you think of the food there? I was really shocked by a device called a rice cooker. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this? I should bring my rice cooker. It's right there. <laughs> I have one now. So yeah, I've matured and I have a rice cooker now in my life. But it's, yeah, like it's brilliant because I mean, like rice is, it's, is eaten with every meal there nearly. So, yeah, you know, it's good to have a, a device that can make perfect rice every time. Yes. Uh, yeah, and just the smell of kind of food being cooked in the streets. Uh, there was always a kind of a charcoal -y or even like wood burning smell that it's just incredible whenever, even like during the summer here in Ireland, when you can smell kind of barbecues in the air, it always just brings me back to the Philippines because that was always the smell we got. Or, um, yeah. Yeah, for me, my best food memory related to a SIR volunteering program is not even when I was officially part of a SIR volunteering program. It would be the first time I met SIR in Mozambique and I was volunteering there on my own, right? And 
to eating in, in magical, eating yeah. in this kitchen that is run for the most part by students who are so passionate about cooking their local food. And, and because it's Portuguese food, Mozambican food, and the spices they use is so, so, so close to Indian spices, of course, of course it is, <laughs> on the other side of the Indian Ocean. Oh, good and, selection. Uh, right yes, <laughs> oh yes, and I, I have chilies. Chilies, chilies, this is like Indian people, not me, maybe I can, if I'm really, uh, can, if I'm, if I'm under, you know, really under peer pressure, but I have friends who can just eat these just like that. And green is strong or like hotter than red. That's yes. something I've learned through yes, this. Green. Irish people can trust a red one, <laughs> but maybe oh, not a green one. And, and you have to eat the seeds. The seeds is where the heat is. Yeah. So a lot of people in India can just do that. They just do that. And in Zimbabwe, I remember when I was in Zimbabwe working while working with Serb, um, <laughs> the, young, the young Africa Zimbabwe, the present director, right? <laughs> Susan, she was saying that she eats chilies, like they have different chilies in Zimbabwe. And her mother always said, eh, you are like a man. Because apparently in Zimbabwean culture, only men are allowed to eat the chilies. Isn't that ridiculous? What? Yeah, if there's something that only a manly person can eat chilies, and because she loved eating chilies, her mother thought, why are you being a man? Just be a lady. <laughs> so, <laughs> but like, these are the kind of funny things and bizarre things you get to understand about food. And then also in Indian culture, there are some vegetables you're not supposed to eat because you're a girl. And it's, yeah, I'm like, oh my God, is that an act? Like, why? Why should only men eat? Oh, you know, for like making babies. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> is that like the food preparation as well? They can peel and maybe mash the potatoes, but the one. Oh, that is purely an Irish thing. I have never heard of that before. <laughs> I came. I was like, what? <laughs> it is my job to mash the potatoes. I'm oh going. my god! Yeah. The stereotyping is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the the rice cooker from the Philippines, oh. um, and for me it's just all of uh, Mozambican cuisine being so close to Indian uh, cuisine. And they also love their desserts and they use coconut a lot as well, which is such a huge part of Indian cuisine. Not when I say Indian cuisine, remember, I'm not saying like all of the country, I'm saying it's certain parts of India, coconut yeah. is a huge thing, especially in the South, it's a huge, huge thing. In Kerala, we have uh, coconut burfi, coconut cake in the in the cookbook yes, as well. Yes, that's what I'm going to come to. No, the yes. coconut burfi is amazing. I've not made it here, so when I saw that the recipe was in is in the book, I was like, yes. And I've said it to people who are mm. vegans and who, yeah. who are looking for different desserts. Um, just, like, how yeah. many dates can you possibly eat, guys? <laughs> you can get like vegan condensed milk now too for, the, yes, for a recipe, as well, which is quite good. Yeah. Uh, it's really easy to make as well. It's real quick. That's why that's why I love it as well. Yes. And you I know have what to say else? the Thailand yeah. recipes as well, coconut like yeah, the yeah. So speaking sticky of rice. Thailand, mm. And speaking of coconut, and speaking of India, speaking of ginger and chilies mm -hmm. what really goes well with co with coconut and ginger and chilies is my favorite vegetable which i'm gonna present to you as a gift <laughs> the cauliflower no way <laughs> I was, okay you should have asked me to, to, to try and read what you're gonna read your mind and what you're gonna talk i wasn't the, expecting a cauliflower the cauliflower is one of the most diabolical vegetables <laughs> because yep. it goes with anything it goes with <laughs> everything. you know you can swap any meat with the cauliflower and that dish is immediately like oomph like for people who do eat meat and they're making vindaloo say or you're making any 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 thai uh, inspired uh, food you know whether it's with green paste or chicken this that this but you just swap it with cauliflower. Boom! Your your dish is immediately 
um, it adds volume to the gym. <laughs> and and because, because cauliflower and aubergine, these are two vegetables, mm -hmm. I think they really take on the soak in the spices really well. So you can you can dress them up however you want. So my go-to yeah. is cauliflower and aubergine. Cauliflower, yeah, I feel like you have to dress cauliflower for, for me to like it, but it's all depending on what you put it in. Yes, but you like always you have roast to it and beautiful yeah. spices and yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And mm. you've got to put the ginger or garlic to avoid feeling gassy in the belly. <laughs> it's a fact. And if you don't like ginger or garlic, you know some people can't cope with garlic. Um, mm. but they can cope with cauliflower and they might feel they might feel unwell so that's why the indian thing you know we use as the teeth yeah that's what it does to the food it, it makes mm. it less gassy on you like the gassiness mm. is gone that's why we put asafoetida but we don't put ginger or garlic uh, we would put asafoetida into the food it's a tip there there you mm. go tip alert god help tips from joe <laughs> From my mother. Um, cauliflower was quite common veg when we ate together as a group of volunteers in the Bajo tribe as well. Like the, the memories, like I talk about a rice cooker, but really the menu, the me memories are like being in the school and like there would be a roster of different tasks. So some days you'd be on lunch tasks and you'd be chopping vegetables for everyone and we'd all sit down and eat together at lunchtime. But cauliflower was always wanting beans and carrots, sometimes potatoes, not, not too often. But, um, yeah, yeah there is a there, there is a bizarre sound. I wonder if it's your pods. Oh, maybe. Let me change over my. Yeah. Okay. Tech, 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 tech problems. While Paula switches tech uh, stuff, um, the cookbook has we were saying stories as well, along with the recipes. And there, when I say stories, what we mean are essays and articles. And of course, we have to ask Lisa Fingleton um, from Cork to write about eating local food and taking action. And Lisa Fingleton herself quotes Vandana Shiva, who is a phenomenal lady. I'm back. Yeah, that sounds gone now. Yay. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, the quote of Vandana Shiva in the book. Um, in Lisa's article is when you control food, you control society. When you control seeds, you control life on earth. And we don't mm. want that. We don't want that. Um, Paula, when you were talking to Anne Maher of the Urban Co-op in, in Limerick, yeah. there was some truth bombs that she dropped. <laughs> yeah, well. good time. Yeah. <laughs> About looking after our farmers eating yeah eating yeah. local wherever you are is super important because it's it's important to support our farmers and it goes back to that quote as well so yeah like when you when you actually go out there and try and find local produce and you hear the stories of the people who are making it and growing it yeah. it's quite special and i feel like that disconnect is kind of gone now where because it's so easy to just go in and get cheap veg in the supermarket yeah um you know this uh, and so places like the urban co-op like it's it's a beautiful store and there's uh, the feeling you get in it is different than when you go into just your normal supermarket you know mm -hmm. it's the same with any co-ops or even mm -hmm. farmers markets uh, yeah. you know like and the chit chat with the yeah. farmer's market, what I love is the chit chat. Yeah. And, um, I remember being in the big market in Barra in Mozambique. I remember going to the, um, when I was young, our family, we lived in Nairobi for three years and going to the market in Nairobi, you could always go into this, you know, supermarket back then in the freaking nineties, but then this huge open market and it, in Nairobi, and then the, sh the shopkeepers, they would just talk to us 
presuming they know our local language, you know, they wouldn't talk to us in English or they wouldn't even engage to you in Swahili. They just start talking to you in Gujarati or whatever language that was most spoken. The second um, largest minority language in, in Nairobi would be uh, Gujarati, you know, which is, a, which is an Indian language. So, so the ladies and, the, and all the shopkeepers, they just start talking in Gujarati and you're just like, how is this happening? Um, <laughs> and even here in Cork, if, no matter which market you go to, whether it's the one uh, in the local uh, for Scala in Black Rock, Black Rock or whether you go to the Cold Key, mm. the banter is endless. I mean, you mm. could stop at every stall and talk to the producer who who's mm. made, who grew the cauliflower or who yeah. grew the, 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 the potatoes, the apples. It's always so amazing that they have the energy to talk to you after having yeah. worked so hard yeah. <laughs> yeah. all week. I'm like, how are you talking to me? It's the main event of the week. It's the social yeah. event. That's the, like, it's a social thing, really going to these things. The Middleton one is fantastic as well in Cork. Yeah. Um, and it's just fun. It's fun to go to them. And yeah. like markets are just like, we had to go through markets to get to the Bajau tribe every day in the Philippines, you know, and that's, um, so going to the markets in Ireland is a special thing to do as well. It yeah. is, it should be a special mm. thing to do it. And it's especially, I find that going to your local market can be a date, you guys, yeah. it can be a date. It can be a friend, <laughs> best friend date. It could be a romantic date. It can be a family, it is, it is a family date. I mean, you see loads of families at markets um, and stuff. But I think for those people who have been in isolation and haven't had the chance to go on a date, you should go <laughs> to the local market and buy eggs at least. <laughs> yeah. Very romantic. <laughs> very romantic to eat eggs together. Yeah. That's what Team Sir believes. Eggs is very good for you. <laughs> and if you're vegan, you could still buy. Um, I think some markets do have people who sell like gluten free uh, bread or. Um, well, there's also what else can vegan people all sorts, eat? Especially the fresh veg. That's the big yeah, one. The fr yeah, fresh of course. Grown veg and grown here. And Ireland apple juice. Well. Everybody's always selling mm. apple juice in the market. I'm like, I don't understand. I mean, how much apple juice can we all actually have? But it's so yum. Uh, it's actually kombucha that everyone's drinking now, Joe. Oh, is it? So sorry. <laughs> kombucha. Mm. It's a great, it's a step above apple juice. It's a whole other ballgame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what else? What else is so amazing about our cookbook, Paula? The the stories that come with it too. So you were talking about the Lisa Finkelton's piece and yeah. some of our recipes were even sponsored by local stores here in Ireland. So the yeah. Urban Co-op sponsored the Irish recipes yes. and Seb and his team in Cafe Temple in Galway sponsored the Philippines ones. Yeah, um, It's close to Seb's heart because he was in the Philippines with serve as a volunteer. So naturally that's what he wanted to do. And, and they've been great at supporting serve ever since. They even took part in our recent fundraiser in September, Active 30, which is- Yeah, they closed the gap. They Close. did, yeah, their, their donation got us to the top. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, a, a, a funny recipe that I adore from this cookbook is how to make the chips the magical way. The, the, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, it's very simple, but I've never done it before by like soaking it and the way you chop it specifically yeah, uh, bake it in the oven. So it's, they're actually quite healthy. They're not like deep fried. They're delicious every single time. Yes. Um, so I, I actually have gone to that a few times. And yeah. even the. I, yeah, yeah, I think that people might think like, oh, I'm not into that. I'm not so into cooking. So, mm. oh, do I do? I don't have time to cook stuff like that. That's OK. Life comes in the way and you don't have time to cook. But you can get the cookbook to look at the photos. Look at all the photos. And these are not stock photos, people. These are, this is someone we know. <laughs> um, you know, this is um, Tommy cooking noodles in the Batjao School, Philippines 2019. That would be a photo that would have been taken by a SERV volunteer that year. And they would have a story about Tommy who must mm -hmm. be really cook ass. I mean, look at that smile like he was on, he was on lunch duty that day definitely 
behind that picture was probably three or four star volunteers chopping veg to help them. Yes, cook. sweating, <laughs> sweating, never not knowing how do I chop this? I mean, how does one chop carrots? How do you julienne carrots so that they're not in your way while you're eating the noodles? It's a skill. <laughs> Um, and also the sketches. These are, yeah. again, not stock. They were specifically made, um, drawn by a volunteer. Charlotte, who, yeah. who designed all the graphics for Either the cookbook. All the little bits. So I think visually, that again, that's a picture a volunteer has taken. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing was put together when we were all locked down this time last year. We had started working on it. We were like, we were properly knee deep and making a cookbook this time last year and it was all done virtually so it was incredible to pull mm. something like this off as a virtual task force yeah that picture is taken by a gentleman who lives in belfast um mr cunningham ronan uh, oh. no it's not ronan sorry i always get confused between the two ronan and david cunningham no no apologize. ah david yeah in in that was in vietnam yeah yeah no yeah. it's brazil oh is Brazil. Brazil. Look at the crab. Oh, the there. prawns. Yes, yes. Yes. So you and you're see... talking about like not having a lot of time to cook as well. And a lot of the recipes have like mixtures of uh, spices and things like that that you can put together. But I mean, you can't just go to a local store. As I particularly love some of the Indian stores that are around scattered around Cork City and you can get like pre mixed yes. uh, spices and they are much better than the ones that you can get in like Main drop, name drop some main no, so just but, like mainstream like, on the high yeah. street instead of the high street yeah going to the yeah it's so they're so cheap compared to like getting a tiny little jar and in the normal yeah. super, supermarkets and, you get a big bag of spice and all you have to do is add this yes veg, the pre-mix but in some and, tomatoes and when you go into the shop, speak to the shopkeeper, tell the shopkeeper this is what you're cooking, and they'll be bursting with ideas of which brand of spices you should try out and stuff like that and if you see other people in the shop who look very different to you <laughs> who know what they're buying then ask them yeah. this is what i want to cook what is your suggestion and if you see me definitely ask me in the shop because i'm like i'll tell you okay no use this one no no don't put that put that instead use that spice instead of that brand and stuff like that you know? and what which type of rice as well because there's so many oh, different types of, like yeah well i was overwhelmed the first time i went in i was like i'm going in to get a big bag of rice because oh. we're all going to be in lockdown and i can't go to the shop so <laughs> I was like, which bag? The bag I picked, it was terrible rice. Yeah. But, but each time my mother comes, she's always going out about the rice here. Like, this is not basmati rice. They are cheating you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a list of where to shop, just some yes. recommendations uh, yes. in the book as well, which is quite nice. Uh, yeah. Like, to, you know, to give you a heads up in most of the cities in Ireland. Um, yeah. so, like, and those shops are still open, <laughs> which is yeah, great. They are. Yeah. And like, there's other shops around the country that aren't noted here let's say that you can go to like in you know your local like most big towns have stores now with um spices from around the world and things like that so yeah it's very so good. what's the big call to action for people everywhere when it comes to world food day eat local as much as you can shop local as much as you can don't waste food because every time you waste food, you're wasting the energy of the farmers and everyone who, mm. you know, their labor went into it. You're also wasting water when you waste food. Yeah. And once you've shopped local, you need a recipe to cook, <laughs> buy our cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> Try something different. Exactly. Yeah. This, this, that's what the recipes in here are. And yeah, think about, just think, I suppose tomorrow is a good day to just think about food in a global in a global space and just start thinking about what do people other in other places eat and uh, the cookbook is a really good way to kind of learn that as well you know that's why and nutrition yeah. as well you know with yeah. food comes nutrition so think about people in marginalized communities who mm. you know wouldn't have access access to nutritious food and and what can we do to ensure that there is access to that um yeah yeah exactly yeah 
It's a yeah. good day to think. That's it. To be reflective, but also to take action. When you're ready to take action, uh, go to serve.ie and see all of the information. We have a big blog section. You can read, you can actually just search up keywords like food <laughs> rice <laughs> and then you'll get a whole list of <laughs> blogs about eating rice cooking yeah. carrots <laughs> um or if you want to look up experiences of volunteers in thailand then just type in Th thailand and then mm. you'll get hundreds of blogs yeah. yeah yeah we've and we're getting ready for christmas as well i know that it's not even halloween yet but we are the cookbook will be for sale it's as a really nice option for Christmas for gifts for people. And we've got other options that you can like give someone a cookbook with some other nice bits and pieces that we've got from our partner in Thailand, the Good Shepherd Sisters, um, handmade woven products like pot holders, little toothpick holders and Christmas items as well that could decorate your Christmas table with on the day. So they're just they're just really nice options to give people something with a bit more heart let's say this christmas a little bit more special more ethical um and there's a lovely story behind behind them and where they're made yeah shout yeah. out to the, all the rural women uh mm -hmm. we have come to know in the last so many years be it thailand be it philippines be it uh, zambia Mozambique, and um ethical shop has uh gifts from nankai and it also has uh, cards that are handmade by men and women from rural communities. Yep, I love Paula has a display for every time I say something. <laughs> All I have is cauliflower. <laughs> cauliflower. <laughs> yes, so yeah, thank you everyone who is listening, who is not listening, but you might listen later. But, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this was our first Facebook Live um, via Zoom, so it's great great we, we feel really good okay our friday first, feels yes friday feels take care everyone and thanks uh, everyone yeah thanks for listening to us yes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have tea the next time yes we will yeah. be having tea the next time okay paula <laughs> i'll see you outside zoom <laughs> okay bye